How's it going guys? We're back. This is actually our second take of this video. We had some technical issues so I'm hoping that I'm remembering everything to include and go over it again with you guys. We are going to be talking about the Jewel Blades. This is going to be a super crash course. Only the essentials, the combos, the top level things that you need to know about the Jewel Blades. We just recently did the Charge Blade on your channel. Isn't that right T6? Yeah we did, we did, we did. It's going to be out today. If you want to know how to do those guard points, those infamous card points that everybody talks about, that's the place to be. Awesome. And the Charge Blade is looking so good in Rise as well. <laughs> but we're here right now for the Jewel Blades because the Jewel Blades are also super stylish in Rise. I think they might even be rivaling the uh, the Longsword for the most anime weapon since we've got the Levi Spine Dash with like aerial Jewel Blade style. We've got the Naruto Run like T6 is doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just loving the Jewel <laughs> He's gone, he's gone off screen. <laughs> I am loving the Jewel Blades. If you guys have seen my Twitter clips, I'm playing them. I'm doing stylish kills, amazing tail chops, all kind of fun stuff. Uh, they're just really fun in Rise, and there's some really cool things that will go over that makes them sort of even better than in the past games and really makes them like a smooth weapon to use. So, again, in this, it's going to be a crash course, very top level. We're not going to deep dive into particular nuances and motion values and all of that kind of stuff. It's just going to be the bare essentials to get you to jump off of your main weapon and try out the dual blades, or if you're a new player, to just pick them up with relative ease. If you have any particular text, some particular like specific thing that's amazing with dual blades that no one else knows about, put it in the comments down below. Share the knowledge. We might even cover a video on it. Of course, shouting you out if you are the person that shared it and all that kind of stuff. So if you know, if you're one of the sweats, Put it down in the comments below and uh, we'll take a look but hopefully this will help everybody else out that might be new to the jewel blades so first of all we need to talk briefly about the jewel blades two six i know you were wait, playing wait, wait. them a fair bit in let's the just demo, go right? back as well let's go back i want those spicy tips guys though i respect anybody that's got that spicy information about the weapon not like something like oh if you press a you do a hit i'm talking about like <laughs> you do this particular thing and it results in more damage or some crazy thing like that's the tips i want but my experience with the dual blades uh i came in on the longsword obviously but this was the second weapon that i tried out i saw a speedrunner running with it and it was just amazing uh what they did in even like the demo so i had to jump on it in the main game and i was just like oh my gosh the couple of the silk skills and that you're going to be talking about in a minute and some of the stuff that i found out as we unlocked them i was just like yo this was amazing weapon so um yeah dual blades mm -hmm. yeah piece of me stylish i just i i just love the freaking we... aerial stuff which we'll get into in a minute guys it's so fun uh, been... but briefly to just talk about the dual blades themselves the Jewel Blades are one of the best weapons to do elemental damage as well as status damage. This is because they're so fast hitting that they can end up dishing out a lot of that elemental damage in the port. Because to recap, elemental damage is a portion of your damage number. So when you're hitting very rapidly, very fast, you're getting overall a higher amount of elemental damage out. While status is proc based, so you have a chance on hit to apply the status effect. So more hits equals a higher average amount of uh, status across a period of time. So they're very, very good. That's the very top level explanation. They're very good at both elemental and uh, status. And they also have some of the coolest freaking designs now. I mean, we both we just have random dual blades here, but I think they both look really sick. I know any OGs from World will remember the, uh, the drumsticks, which particularly uh didn't look very good so we've actually got some nice weapon designs for dual blades as well let me let me whip uh, out so the best like weapon design one second let me just whip these out so that people can see like how sick these are i don't yeah, even I, know which ones you're gonna oh of yeah, course, they, of course. These I are no i should have known this one. i haven't crafted that i need that freaking <laughs> almadron orb to craft those they they look like some <laughs> tron weapon it's so <laughs> glowy spikes on them i think they're also pretty decent uh water elemental jewel blades like they might even yeah. be like one of one of the best water ones i'm not i'm not specifically sure on that but they look really cool uh so you have style you have damage you have status you have elemental potential and new things that are added in rise as well so first of all let's talk about the uh the switch skills and the silk bug moves so i'm actually going to set the uh the training dummy to stomp because 
the very first move I want to talk to you guys about, you know, and we'll put our infinite wire bugs on to make this a bit easier. The very first move to talk about is actually uh, this shrouded vault move, which I'll do it away from the training dummy to make it a bit easier to explain. This is such a huge bonus to uh, dual blades. It gives you an on command uh, way to counter an attack. You literally tank it and counter it. Uh, I, I don't even think you take any damage, um, at least from my experience. You see here, you do this sort of short dash with a silk bug pull. And if you get hit at any point in that sort of silk bug dash, you just ignore the hit and you go into a crazy flurry of, uh, of attacks. I'll show you real quick on the dummy here. And the fact that you actually get several hits off makes this, again, really good for the elemental and the status side of the dual blade. If I position myself correctly, we should see about five or six hits. You see that? You just literally slash them uh, across the screen as you do this counter. And what's really nice about that counter as well is it works on roars. So if a monster's about to roar or attack you, you don't just have to quickly run out of the way, which would have been like the traditional way to do it with dual blades. You can now just count, like counter it with the silk bug move, and it only costs one silk bug. It's really, really good. So that is the first move that you're going you know, to be You know why it's so good as well? Is this like, it's got instant startup. So you can just be uh, quite reckless with it. Like if you're stuck out in the middle of nowhere, you can just literally just press the button and you're basically in the counter, which is like huge. Exactly. So definitely get experiment with it and get used to the timing on this because trust me, you'll be using it a lot and it's really, really good. It becomes like... You just become this unstoppable, like, rapid attacking machine when you start to get really good with it. So that's the first one, the first Silk Bug move to talk about. The second Silk Bug move is actually uh, a switch skill, which means you have two different variants. So if I go over to the box here, we look at the switch skills. Uh, we're going to first, we'll be talking about Piercing Bind. This is our other Silk Bug move. So Piercing Bind here is basically a stab with a kunai on a location of the monster. It has a very short range. It then pseudo clones your damage to that point and does an explosion of damage based on how much hits you've got in that time period of it being active and there's a really powerful stylish combo that we'll talk about in a minute before we show that one off i'll briefly talk about tower vault here uh because this is this is a very interesting one this isn't the one that i'm going to recommend to you guys in this sort of crash course but if you know any particular things about tower vault let me know in the comments below if there's any special text about it because Tower Vault's interesting. It literally is just this, this silk bug jump into the sort of sky. And it's really good in one sense because it can sort of keep you almost indefinitely in the sky for as long as you basically have silk bugs active. I'll show you here. You can sort of combo uh, hits and then just repeat and you never have to land. But outside of that, I'm not sure about the use case for it. It doesn't seem to be as good as the other move which we'll talk about in uh well we'll talk about it now so tower vault is really good to, to stay airborne but when you compare it against the uh the piercing bind move there is a clear winner at least for me and i think as a top level like crash course on dual blades i think you guys are definitely going to want to try out the piercing bind move so i'm going to bring his head down so we can get to the to the weak zone on the training dummy here but essentially, we pull out our weapon, Piercing Bind stabs with the kunai, leaves a sort of mark, and I won't attack him yet, but you'll see it just does a pop of damage after a while. Now, if we if we do it again with attacking the, the, uh, the monster or the training dummy in this case, you'll see it sort of clones our damage, like a percentage clone, and then popped for even more damage uh, than it did without any sort of damage clone. So it builds up this kind of bar behind the scenes that then adds extra damage onto the explosion while also cloning your damage which is just like insanely good and you're comparing it against <laughs> tower vault which is just like a jump so yeah so that, that there's that a move, clear winner yeah. here at least in my experience right? so not only is that gonna increase the amount of damage that you are outputting which is like it does a proportional amount of damage it's like your slashing damage is duplicated to that spot it also means that you can damage the monster from a completely different place so you can put that on its like head or its tail or whatever and then run away and to somewhere else or reposition somewhere else and attack that spot and it will still clone up the damage and over tower vault that's also while you're in the air obviously with tower vault you're doing um mountain damage but like this is a far easier way to get that mountain damage on the monster mm. with like 
in massive chunks as well because with Tau Vault, the monster will probably reposition and just clap you out of the air anyway. So it's not going to be a great uh, thing if the monster moves or if the monster has like one of those janky aerial hitbox moves going on and you just get clapped. With this, you're, you just stab it into the monster, you get the damage on it as you're building it up and you get the damage as it explodes and you get your own damage as you are actually attacking it. So it's like, whoa! It's like, yeah, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. Exactly. I totally agree. Yeah, I think... There's obviously an interesting use case for Tower Vault, but for this top level crash course, Piercing Bind is going to be our go-to, and you'll see the synergy for it when we go over the combo uh, shortly after we talk about the rest of the Switch skills. Yeah, so somebody out switch... there obviously mm -hmm. must know that there is some like crazy use case for Tower Vault, and I just need to know what it is so that I can like uh, do it, because all of the other Switch skills and all of the other weapons work in like, a really peculiar or... Um, weird way. Maybe it's that we're missing something and their skills coming in, like an update or something for it for it to really shine. But for now, piercing bind just seems like the go-to. Um, yeah. So what's the uh, next uh, switch skill? Definitely. That you're be so talking? the next one we're going to talk about the, uh, the the next choice in your switch skills is essentially demon mode or feral demon mode. For this top level crash course, I'm just going to recommend that you pick the one that you like. Uh, the feral demon mode is kind of cool. It gives you a sort of slash on your evade which we'll talk about more in a minute. But generally, as a new player or just trying to pick up the dual blades, don't worry about the nuances between the two too much. Pick the one you like and you'll get along just fine. And again, if you know uh, any particular, like, important differences between the two, put them in the comments. But keeping this very top level, uh, it won't really impact our sort of bread and butter combo that we'll go over soon. So I'm going to choose demon mode here, which is the default one that everyone will have at the beginning. And then the final switch move and this is an important difference between these two, we have Demon Flurry Rush and Demon Flight. So we'll start off with Demon Flurry Rush and we'll go over some of our more basic combos and then we'll go over our fancy aerial dual blade style combo that I recommend you guys try out afterwards. So let's talk about what you actually want to be doing with the weapon, what moves you want to be doing in different scenarios. The first thing to say is like we just mentioned about the demon mode, you want to be in demon mode uh, a majority of the time guys. So. Let me just make sure I've got my HUD on so you guys can see all of our different bars, our stamina bar and everything. When we press the right trigger, we're going to go into our, our demon mode or our uh, flurry demon mode if you have that one selected. And you'll see that our stamina is draining slowly but surely. It just will go down over time. But while we're in this mode, we get the fancy Naruto run and we're faster while we're just moving around. So you can just do this for mobility and it's also really good for repositioning around the monster and getting to those weak spots a lot easier and you'll see our stamina is about to drain so we've dropped out of demon mode so you do have to keep an eye on your stamina much like if you've been if you've been playing bow or anything like that uh stamina management is going to be important and we'll talk about some skills later on and how you can help mitigate this but essentially you want to keep your demon mode up a majority of the time this is going to be where you're going to be doing some uh, stronger moves and it's going to actually change your moveset to allow us uh to squeeze in some extra attacks here and there in our bread and butter combo in a minute uh, while we're in demon mode, there is a little double sword icon below our stamina bar that while we're in demon mode and we're attacking a monster, that icon will actually build up. Um, I'm going to say it will it will fill red one, a, after a certain point and this changes your non-demon mode attack slightly. Let's not worry about that. Let's keep it top level. It doesn't impact your gameplay hugely and our bread and butter combo that we're going to be doing uh, is kind of it, it doesn't matter about that bar basically we want to be in demon mode as much as possible so don't worry too much about that right now let's keep it top level and uh and new player friendly so that's demon mode there's one more important thing about uh demon mode that you will need to know and that is while you're in demon mode you get the most awesome dodge in the entire game you get some super slide that may ev evade extender makes that slide absolutely awesome look at look out <laughs> I can barely keep up with these things. <laughs> you look like you've got tires on your arms. Yep. You dash around. <laughs> <laughs> so really, really good for repositioning. A really fast dodge. If something like a Tigrex or a Diablos is running at you, you can literally like dodge once or twice to the side, and you're just completely out of there. You're you've, you've zoomed back to camp like instant instant oh. transmission style. So. Uh, demon mode, not only do you move faster, you get like a really awesome dodge uh, that's great for repositioning. So that's your sort of top level of demon mode, and we want to be keeping in that mode as much as we can. So 
let's talk about actual uh, combos and attacks that we want to do. So in past games, uh, a really, really strong combo was to go into your demon mode and press X and A together and you do the blade dance move. Now you can't move while you do this, you're locked in place. It's kind of a long animation, uh, but you do get a lot of attacks out. However, in Monster Hunter Rise, uh, it's quite nice because you don't necessarily need to do that anymore uh, to be like optimal because just spamming X on the spot, I believe actually is just as good if not better now in Rise. So when you are at those weak points and you're on the ground, what you want to be doing is literally going into demon mode and just spamming X as much as you can on that weak point and you'll be getting some crazy damage out. Loads of t loads of hits. If you have a status weapon, you'll be getting loads of status procs. The same for elemental. You'll be getting loads of elemental damage out on those weak points. So your ground combo is literally demon mode and spam X on the weak point when the opportunity strikes. Now we can take it one step further by incorporating our silk bug move, our piercing bind. So when we're at the weak point, we can insert the, uh, the kunai with piercing bind and then we just spam X, and that's going to be your really powerful ground combo. And as soon as it ends, you can input another one and start attacking again. So when the opening presents itself, do Piercing Bind, go into Demon Mode, spam X. That's going to be absolutely huge damage output for you on the Jewel Blades. There is one more thing um, to say about that, though. Um, if you are wanting to reposition on the monster... Uh, because it's it's just woken up, the traps just ended, you know, the KO just wore off. If you have the um, the Demon Flurry Rush, which is the switch skill that we just switched to, this is a great way to keep your damage output up while also moving around the monster because the Demon Flurry Rush has attacks and movement baked into it. So you can kind of keep your attacks up while moving around the monster based on the situation. So Demon Flurry Rush is very, very nice, but... For us, now in Rise, I don't even think you want to be using that. Now, we have we have the true way of the Jewel the Blade. Power the, of aerial flight. <laughs> the power of flight, exactly. So, 2-6, can you tell us a bit about the, the Demon of Flight? Because I know you've tried it out a little bit. So, this is kind of like Aerial Jewel Blades in some of the older Monster Hunter games. Um, definitely more like Gen per se and there was kind of like a move like this in iceborne that you could use a clutch claw to kind of bounce off uh the monster but they've made it way more streamlined and part of your core combo now so if you simply go up to the monster and you just flip around pressing a button you'll be able to just fly up in the sky and you can go into your levi move you can just stay where you are uh, statically and just do an x combo or you can do the combo that paradise is going to show you which is probably the most optimal way to play but the real cool thing about this movie is not only is it prop you up into the air, it's also got massive like iframes in the middle of the move. So you can uh, use it to dodge through roars. You can use it to dodge through like um, attacks. I'm not going to attempt to do it right now. Paradise is trying to put me on the position <laughs> by putting a stomp down. But it does have iframes in the middle of the move. So if you want to do it, you can uh, pop up and do it. But it's in, in the middle. There you go. He so you got, it. got it there. It's weird. It's a weird timing. A lot of moves are front loaded with the iframes, but the more that you play, the more you'll get used to it, and you'll find that actually you can tank a lot of hits with this. Uh, you see, I just messed it up there, but the more you get used to it, the more uh, it will just sort of come naturally to you. I'll try it one more time because it's a weird timing, guys, but trust me, you want to practice with this because it's really going to just help your aerial dual blades style out. And you can get some really cool combos and really cool clips to show off to your friends when you're iframing moves, flying into the air, going full attack on Titan, Levi dashing down the spine to get to the nape. It is, it is so fun and so cool. So importantly, not only is it a way to get in the sky, but it has those iframes in there as well. So let's just stop the uh, training dummy from stomping for a sec. So let's talk about the combo that you want to be doing on the uh, on the dual blades to get huge damage out and to be super stylish and taking advantage of this sort of new aerial style of the dual blades so literally it's it's the most simple and easy combo to do the only caveat here is that you need to be very close to the monster in order to actually get piercing bind to attach to them it's a very short hitbox so you need to be right in the monster's face or right at the weak point in order to do this but you want to activate your demon mode hit them with piercing bind, kick off the monster with demon flight, get a cheeky couple air rush attacks with X into the A 
spinning blade, the Levi spine dash. And essentially, it's very hard to see because there's so many damage numbers popping up on screen. But about by the time you land from the uh, the spine dash move, your your piercing bind, the kunai, would have exploded, and all of those hits that you got in from the jump, from the hit, and from the spine dash will have been cloning on that kunai and added to that threshold to increase the damage of piercing bind. So I'm going to try and show it one more time. I'm going to try and get all the damage numbers on the screen because it's such like a, a sick combo. We're going to stab in. We're going to kick off. We're going to get... Oh, I, I messed it up there. I think you got it though, 2-6. You absolutely yeah. nailed it there. Easy, man. You know what? If uh, this is a little tip as well, you always want to have your, your stamina maxed out. When you're in the training room for a while, your stamina will deplete. So I'm just going to eat a steak real quick. We'll get our stamina back. So we'll go into our demon mode. We'll insert the uh, the piercing bind. We'll kick off. And we'll do this. Oh, there we go. We got the attacks in and we do the spine dash. It is such a cool move and it's so easy to do. Once you've practiced a couple times, you'll really get used to it. And you'll just find that you're doing this from like, from basically muscle memory. And you saw the piercing damage there at the end as well. It's a really stylish move. You're going to get cool clips. You're going to get tail cuts in the middle of it as well. One thing to remember is that while you do the, the kickoff and you do the A input to go into the spinning blade dance, the spine dash, the directional input that you, uh, you do on that move will determine whether you go down the tail of the monster or up through to the head of the monster. So you can basically choose if you want to try and get the tail chop or if you want to reposition and land in front of the monster's head. It's entirely up to you and you get that sort of choice while you do it. It's, it's a really fun combo. It's a really easy way to play uh, to get both good damage and extra style points for using aerial dual blades. So for some reason, again, just... I just always thought you do, you go to the back. I learned something new there. I just I didn't realize mm -hmm. it. And if you aim for the head, it does so much damage when you're you do yep. the A move as well. So it's quite uh, it's quite spicy. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Two six, you've already mastered this combo. I'm literally watching you. You just literally did it flawlessly. So literally, guys, there it is. An easy to follow very efficient you're using you're taking advantage of the cloning damage you're getting loads of hits in the meantime it is a really awesome way to play dual blades and i think really anyone could pick up and play it in this sort of uh with this combo you don't have to worry too much about all the particular nuances of things just remember you need to have a certain opening to do the uh the piercing bind so if you are on the ground you and the monster is stationary you might just want to do a piercing bind into basically spamming your, yeah, uh, your X attack. When in doubt, if you... the spam X <laughs> with <Exactly>. your passing bind. <laughs> <laughs> That's the easy mode of dual blades. But when the monster's running around and being a bit tricky, uh, you can just always go straight into Demon Flight, get some cheeky uh, air attacks in, and go into the spinning blade dance. Uh, when the monster's running around, you will find it surprisingly easy to uh, to still launch off and to get a spinning uh, spine dash down the monster because it kind of like magnetizes you onto the monster once you hit them with it. Um, and it, it sort of increases your overall DPS uptime across the course of the hunt. So that's your essential combos, your bread and butter aerial dual blades, like repeatable uh, high damage uh, combo that you can do as well. Let's talk about skills for a second now, because there are a few skills that are very important for the dual blades, much like the bow, which we've talked about in our bow mix set videos on the channel. And 26, you have a bow oh, crash yeah. course over on your channel as well. Yeah. Obviously, you just want to go for, because this is a weapon anyway, you just want to kind of go for the damage stuff. is isn't uh, going to be like a massive departure, but there are stuff around like stamina, um, per, like preservation and like stamina management and uh, evasion that you might want to consider. Stuff like constitution, uh, marathon runner, uh, and maybe even uh, evade it, stamina surge or... Um, evade extender or evade window those are things that you might want to consider for the dual blades as an overall thing i think evade extender is just insane you can see here like it literally causes me to teleport to <laughs> narnia transmission so and he's gone <laughs> yeah so that's one that you might consider a window is just a great one it just means that as you evade you're, it's less likely that you're going to get hit because your evasion uh window is larger and then constitution is every time that you do like a dash it will consume less uh, uh stamina which we will go into a more deeper dive in another video in the future because there have been some changes to how much uh stamina you can get in terms of reductions uh using co constitution and a bunch of other 
eating things that you can get out, out there as well. So definitely keep an eye on stuff that is kind of more utility for the dual blades as well that you can spec in quite easily or for free. I think um, there's a bunch of armor sets that have stamina stuff on there and are... Yeah, the Rackner set is really, really good. Yeah, I think the Nagakuga set has a bunch of like affinity and uh, evasion stuff on there as well. So maybe that's something that might be uh, applicable to this as well because having that extra affinity just means that you're going to be critting all the time which means that you're going to be getting a lot more damage and it's because it's a fast hitting weapon 100 percent. and on the topic of items you briefly mentioned it a dash juice is always going to be a nice thing to bring for dual blades uh it's basically an item that helps you with your uh, with your stamina uh consumption by giving you like a buff that uh reduces the amount of stamina that you use so uh, make sure to bring dash juices on your dual blade runs. And if you have uh, palicos with you as well, there's a certain palico move. I can't remember the exact name. It's like go fight now or, or go ready fight or something like that. It's going go uh, fight go, does... right? Yeah. And it does a little cheerleading dance and it gives everyone a stamina buff as well. Uh, it's really good if you have that on your palico. And like you said, 2 6, outside of your stamina management and maybe like evade extender or evade window, weakness exploit is going to be absolutely great. You're hitting a bunch you want to crit. Your elemental attack decorations to synergize with the elemental attack on your on your dual blades are going to be really important because the dual blades are so good at elemental damage. As well as the status attack ups, if you're using a status dual blade, it's going to be really, really good as well. And then obviously, like attack boost or crit boost. Crit boost is arguably not as good for dual blades because the elemental portion of your damage won't uh, be affected by the crit boost so crit boost is still okay but you might want to prioritize other things on your dual blades build particularly but that is our crash course on the dual blades some sort of hopefully by now you have an overview of what you kind of want to be doing and you know your bread and butter combo to get some really nice damage and extra style points on the monster with the aerial attacks if you know any particular techs again i'm going to ask this to you guys any particular techs or moves or specific nuances of things put them down in the comments below because i just want to inspire people to try out the dual blades and switch it up from their main and try out all these new different weapons but it's great to hear any particular nuances and special amazing things that you can do that aren't obvious at, at first glance when you're trying out a weapon uh two six over on your channel we said it before but we just talked about the charge blade do you want to tell us a bit about that yeah so we're going to go over the charge blade in the same way that we did here um if you guys do have any of those quote crazy tips as well the only reason that we keep on asking is because people previously have come in with some like crazy stuff and we've learned some like nuts stuff as well in the comments if you think people might know it just drop it down in the comment box down below and uh it'll be nice to see if it's like something new that somebody's learned or whatever so definitely comment down down below and uh you can yeah check out that video on the charge blade on my channel if there's any other weapons that you want to see us cover then also let us know that so that we can put a priority on making those videos happen for you guys but other than that i think that's the jewel blades you guys need to get the splat jewelies and uh give it <laughs> give it a go you know give it a go um i think 100%. don't don't just stick to one weapon by the way guys like try to make sure that you are trying out different weapons every time that you switch weapons is kind of like a completely different game i was like literally picked up the light bow gun um yesterday and i was like oh, i'm having so much fun it's like a completely different game even though i've been playing it for like 300 hours already so pick up uh, different weapons become versed in it so then you can roast your friends when you can see that they're not doing it and playing it correctly mm -hmm. okay and one one more thing let me know in the comments down below if this has inspired you to try out the jewel blades let me know how you're getting on with them and remember when you're doing those amazing aerial combos that i've just taught you guys clip it on your switch if you get a cool moment and you can literally flex on your friends with with really cool clips i think that's one of the nicest thing about the dual blades is just how stylish and just cool they are but that's going to be it for this one guys if this video did help you out make sure to drop a like down below and subscribe for more monster hunter videos just like this one we are banging out those monster hunter videos not just on my channel but on 26's channel as well so make sure to check out 26 over there as well but that's pretty much it guys i hope this helped and we'll see you next time Bye bye Thank you so much for watching this video. You can check me out over on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Paradise Central. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one and I'll see you guys in the next one.